Uh, TJ uh, has a couple of kind of transfer portal candidates, um, given the fact that uh, that the portal does open in six days. Uh, so we're going to uh, first talk about the story of quarterback J.J. Cole from Ohio State or <laughs> Iowa State. Yeah, so this is a very intriguing situation. So there's some smoke here where uh... – so previously there was a relationship with JJ Cole in Michigan. Uh, Michigan offered JJ Cole after he signed his letter of intent with Iowa State um, on uh, December twenty first, uh, twenty twenty three is when he signed. Michigan offered December thirtieth. So there's a previous relationship here. He's a backup quarterback at Iowa State who's sitting behind a uh, redshirt sophomore. Okay, so he understands his playing time is very unlikely. He's a former top ten. Uh, recruit in terms of the quarterback position, uh, I believe a top 50 overall. And uh, as you can see, extremely strong arm, uh, a Jared Goff mold type of player, but with a little bit more mobility, a little bit more, as you can see in these highlights here, um, can throw on the run, strong arm, fairly accurate. Uh, this is the type of quarterback that I have talked about previously. And I'm not just throwing this guy's name out here because there's nothing to it. This is a name that is being – back channeled as we speak now this doesn't mean he's coming this doesn't mean uh this is going to be the answer to compete in the fall but it does mean uh the name's being discussed so that's what i'll say there uh he's a name to watch with the portal um and i'm not going to guarantee anything because i don't have that but uh i think it's very interesting and this is the type of quarterback that i was saying the last few weeks you want to find the highly ranked player with a lot of talent sitting behind another guy. There's tons of those in, in college football. We just have to identify them and make the connection. And we'll see what goes. We'll see where it goes from there. And then uh, I'll let do you guys have any uh, anything you want to say on him or. Yeah, I mean, just just in terms of the it, it, you'll know what Michigan's strategy is if, if there's portal shopping for uh, a quarterback. You know, we're not able to see the practices. But uh, you'll know it, it, how much confidence they have. And that includes Tuttle, too. You know, as I mentioned earlier, Tuttle is the floor. Uh, is the floor there or not? You know, are, are we confident in it? You know, um, uh, and could a, can a player like this be better than Tuttle? That, that's the question mark. So, yeah, yeah. I think so. Cole, Cole we'll looked, uh, yeah, Cole looked um, good in, this, in the film here. Um, so I think, uh, you know, we, we tend to have a quarterback come in, even if he's not QB1. You know, there's been a, a trend of a transfer quarterback every year um, in like the QB2 to 3 to 4 position. Now there's going to be Jack, Jack Tuttle getting his seventh year of eligibility. There, there could be two uh, with, with uh, J.J. Cole in the mix. So... We, we've um, talked about Jack Tuttle way too much, but I, I will say that I do have this thought of Jack Tuttle as a seventh year quarterback, just beating Ohio state and then just going straight into collecting social security checks or something. I mean, it's just amazing if that would happen, but anyway, that, I, that's just a, uh, th there are other dreams that are better than that, but I, that, that's just one thought I had. So. <laughs> yeah. So, it's amazing. So our, uh, moving on to uh, Nakai Hill Green. So very yes. interesting. He was on campus this weekend, and he was with the program, and he was doing workouts. Now, he transferred to Charlotte, but then from Charlotte, he transferred to UCF, and he had a pretty good season. He was healthy. So Michigan is um, potentially looking for depth at the linebacker position because after uh, Jay Shaw Barnum and Ernest Hausman, uh, a you got Jimmy Reuter, but Jimmy Reuter has a bit of an injury history. You also have Jaden Hood. But from what I'm understanding about the situation is they would like to potentially, if the right guy is available, add a little depth to the room. So Nikai Hill Green being on campus is very interesting to me. Um, from my understanding, what the situation is, as long as he passes through admissions and goes through – all the hoops that need to occur for him to transfer. Uh, this one might be likely, but we'll see. Um, from my understanding, it's in the early stages of discussion, and 
we'll, uh, you know, we'll kind of go there. We also know, look, the portal does not open for another six days. So technically, um, I guess uh, there's some gray area here. So we won't go, I won't, I won't go too far into things, but uh, it's a name to watch once the portal opens, in my opinion. All right. Uh, so check, keep those names uh, right handy and maybe another emerging in just the last day. We have heard that Ohio State running back Dallin Hayden has decided to enter the transfer portal. Could his relationship with Tony Alford be at the level that he may join the running back core at Michigan? TJ, I know you just heard the news before he went live. Uh, and and all, I, I really only briefly heard a little bit that I've been running around. But um, what do you think? Uh, is there a possibility that he could come with Tony Alford uh, to, to Michigan? It's pretty would be pretty remarkable. So what's funny is like, you know, as you said, I just found out. But like I know who Dallin Hayden is, you know, because he, he actually had a fairly significant role, not this past year, but the year prior. He had over 500 yards and. I always thought he was a, a pretty talented back, um, you know, and, and looking into it a little more since we talked about it, you know, I guess I won't say I'd be surprised if it happened, but I don't think with our running back room as it is, as stacked as our running back room is, I don't think they add a running back to the room. I think when you have Donovan Edwards, you have Cleo Mullins, right? But then you have Ben Hall, you got Micah Capana, Jordan Marshall coming, you got, uh, Cole Cabana. I mean, the room is stacked, man. And we have the speed backs, right? So um, Hayden's kind of more of a, a twitchy speed guy. And we have a few of those in the arsenal. If it, if it happened, you know, I see he's rumored to go to Tennessee. That doesn't surprise me. That's he's from Tennessee. He's from Memphis. So that doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah. Doesn't okay. surprise so that makes, me. Yeah. It doesn't surprise me at all. So and these are yeah, Buckeyes I mean, commenting. So they, they have, they know a thing or two. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. About. And like, like I said, I just, I just, I just don't think they're going to add a running back to the room with the, how stacked our room is right now. So, but it's interesting. It's interesting to think about. Yeah. Uh, so he'd appear to, ha uh, appear to have ties with Tony Alford, but, but the flip side is um, his pass blocking was kind of a question mark. At least that's the OSU reason why he didn't play as much um, as maybe some people thought that he could have. Um, so it'll be, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, but yeah, I, I agree. The depth is, uh, it's as deep as we've been really, uh, uh, with running back. So, uh, you know, let's see what happens. Tennessee makes more sense than Michigan. Absolutely. Um, I agree. I think Tennessee, I just wanted to have some fun with that one, but it does sound like, um, I trust these Buckeyes, who uh, who are commenting that it's Tennessee and it, it sounds it sounds right, um, you know, based on this little bit. But stay tuned. You never know. Um, don't forget, we have a new Big 12 and SEC channel. So go to the Big 12 channel uh, right here and the SEC channel at the Voice of College Football. We'll also have a Big 12 fan zone uh, Thursdays, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Big 12 and main channels.